20th century, science made a promise which it has yet to keep. Limitless energy from the thermonuclear reaction which powers the sun. It's called fusion. Thousands of scientists have worked on this project to make a fusion machine and power the world. This is a reunion for a team of scientists and engineers who made one important step forward towards the future of energy. The, the whole idea that uh, scientists could improve the lot of mankind by scientific research and getting a new source of power, the, the concept it seems very important and it's even more important now. The very fact that it's very difficult to do and still some years off is, is part of the challenge. And it's a, a matter of solving bits of a detective story, finding out what the solution to all these problems are. First of all, finding what the problems are and then proposing better the solution and then checking them out. We need fusion because society is addicted to electricity. All of our modern economies are very energy dependent. We're almost hooked on the stuff. Everything we do, we drive, we travel, we cook, we, we want energy available when we want it, so it needs to be reliable at a cheap and an affordable price. And this is one of the hopes for fusion. We need large scale central generation of electricity to meet baseload power requirements for large cities like London, New York, Delhi, Rome. Three out of the six billion people in the world live in cities hungry for power. Industry too runs on electricity. Nearly all this power comes from burning oil, coal and gas. The pollution from these fires is a big problem. But human greed for electricity is unstoppable. Well, just looking around us, we've got a lot of shop windows here, which are particularly thirsty users of power. Uh, a lot of restaurants where they've got coffee machines, they're probably cooking by electricity. Uh, there are a lot of offices where they've got printers, photocopiers, uh, PCs at work and in some of the taller buildings they'll have escalators and lifts, so an enormous range of end used applications. It seems like it will never end, but it could. We now know that oil and gas are not comfortable endless sources of power. If we look at the North Sea, uh, the UK's main source, that will peak in about five years' time and will be very heavily depleted by about 2030. Power stations use heat to turn water into steam. That's what spins turbines to make power. That heat comes mainly from oil, coal or gas. Nuclear power stations use an atomic process called fission. It splits heavy atoms like uranium to make the heat. It doesn't produce greenhouse gases, but there is a huge drawback. The major problem with fission is what to do with the nuclear waste at the end of the reactor's life. And all those governments which deployed such reactors are now facing this big issue. What do we do with long-term disposal of very high, highly radioactive nuclear waste? Nuclear plants make lots of power all the time, but with a huge toxic legacy. The wind, the waves and the sun's rays make clean energy, but much less of it. Fusion from the heart of the sun could give us the best of both worlds. Constant, plentiful power. No long-term radioactive waste. No chance of a meltdown. It still remains that fusion is, is inherently far, far safer and envi more environmentally friendly than fission, but it's just much more difficult to work, get it to work. If we could make fusion, in our own sun on Earth, we could use its enormous heat directly instead of oil, gas, coal and nuclear fission. Research began in the 1950s. With crude equipment, these scientists tried to capture a tiny piece of the sun. An early, famous British experiment a generation ago was called Zeta. This was at the time of Zeta, 1958. 
I myself heard the stories from Zeta in the late 1950s where they thought it was actually working. Unfortunately, some way off there. But that, that, I thought that was a very inspirational thing, and so uh, many of us are very devoted to the concept of fusion. Satellite images reveal the sun as a giant ball of hydrogen. It's so hot that hydrogen atoms break down and turn into a plasma, the fourth state of matter. Under the huge pressure of gravity at the center, the hydrogen atoms fuse together to make helium. One gas becomes another. The clean, powerful fusion reaction makes light and heat that we feel on Earth 90 million miles away. It takes enormous energy to create a fusion plasma on Earth. Even the most powerful research machines can only hold one for a few seconds. Most earthly plasmas last a fraction of a second. Once it's stable, a power station plasma must produce much more energy than it consumes so there's enough left over to make electricity. That's the key to fusion power. The fuels for fusion on Earth are two special kinds of hydrogen. There's enough dissolved in the oceans for perhaps millions of years. The waste gas is ordinary helium. The Column Research Facility is where the most powerful plasmas on Earth are imprisoned. But for all their power, fusion plasmas are fragile, and that makes them safe. A fusion machine cannot melt down. If something goes wrong, the reaction just stops. Inside, it's a giant metal donut shape. The Russians who invented it in 1968 named the system a tokamak. The first tokamaks were shaped rather like shown in here. This is actually part a segment of the torus of Cullum's first tokamak. It's circular section, quite small. Torus is what mathematicians call this special donut-shaped vessel. Over the years, this shape has evolved to make more powerful plasmas. Theorists have noticed that compact shapes are generally more efficient. They hold more energy, they produce better fusion. Tokamaks have got larger, they've become more elongated and D-shaped in section, and the bit in the middle has got relatively smaller. And about 15 years ago, we began to study what was the limit of this process, how compact you can make this, this equipment. The traditional tokamak can only be so small. It wraps its plasma round a circle of vital machinery. Most of this has nowhere else to go. A compact plasma means a completely new design. In 1986, an American scientist, Martin Peng, proposed a revolutionary experiment to create a compact or spherical plasma. Plasma shape has a strong effect on plasma stability. How stable you can hold the plasma together without the plasma going kaput. One of the primary response to this idea was that it's basically impossible to build. Martin Peng's theory showed the unusual spherical tokamak could be more efficient and more economical than regular machines. It might be a better way to trap a hot plasma on Earth but it remained just a theory. Despite its huge need for energy, 